All right. Okay, you're good to go. Hi, good morning. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I hope you're having a fantastic morning. Uh, Not sure if he's waiting for it. Sorry, we're connecting <laughs> our, uh, our microphone here. It's going any second now. Maybe not. I'm just going to yell. Okay, so hi, I'm Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens. Um, and I am uh, here. There, there we, we go. go. Hi, I'm here to talk to you about the plant of the week. Every Thursday, uh, we have a new plant of the week uh, to show you. Um, and this summer, we're doing the Hummingbird Summer Program here, um, which has been so much fun. Uh, if you haven't been in yet, I know I tell you this every single week, so hopefully you have been in. Um, but we are just buzzing with hummingbirds and butterflies. The butterflies are insane here as well. Um, all day yesterday, I just had butterflies all around me. It was just uh, such an amazing, very snow white type experience here at, at Rogers Garden. So it's been really, really fun. We have a whole section um, completely dedicated to plants that attract hummingbirds. But the nice thing is plants that attract hummingbirds also attract butterflies. So that's why we have a lot of activity going on there. Of course, we have the native milkweed that we're selling. Um, it's so fun to stand there and watch the, the little um, monarchs going around and laying their eggs on the milkweed. Weed. I can actually watch them do it and then go afterwards and check and see the little egg there. It's just, it's been a really, really great summer here at Rogers. So come in, check it out. Uh, if you can't come in, of course, we're doing uh, these live streams for you as well. Um, but it's been, it's been really fun. We are starting to do our live in-person seminars too. So that's been a really fun experience. Uh, we had a really great one all about hummingbird gardening. Um, if you didn't come in, uh, we do post those videos so you can check it out. It's a much longer video than the live streams because it's a totally in-person interactive uh, thing that we're doing here. So it's really fun to be able to do that in person again. Um, so, but let's get down to it. So today's uh, plant of the week is lantana. Don't run away. Don't turn it off. <laughs> lantana is so different than it used to be. Uh, I think a lot of people look at lantana and go, no, that big crazy thing that gets super woody and gets gargantuanly huge and out of control. No, these are dwarf uh, lantana. They're so small and compact and cute and full and green and they don't get all woody. Uh, they don't have all the problems that we've associated with lantana. I know I have been uh, looking at lantana in the past and going, it just gets so big and crazy and I don't think I have any place to put it. But these new ones are so amazing. Uh, they mostly only get about like 24 inches by 24 inches. They're really, really fantastic. So because of their size, they're fantastic in pots. Uh, they do really well. Uh, they do appreciate full sun. That makes them nice and full and bushy. They can handle a little bit of shade, but they really want hot heat. These are a great hot summer plant. Uh, they appreciate that hot heat. They get loaded with flowers. They come in so many different pretty colors. Um, I'm really loving this guy here. Um, he's such a great color, right? It's so beautiful. Uh, this is Anne, uh, Anne Marie, um, but we also have hot blooded. If you tuned in last week, I was talking about kufia, but I was kind of showing things that paired well with kufia. And I showed you guys the hot blooded last week. Um, and that was a hit. We had so many people coming in and buying it. Um, if you uh, can't come in, you can also order all these plants um, online and do curbside pickup or setup for delivery as well if you're local in the area. Um, but these are really, really great, even in the tag, great in containers right so they're really 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 perfect for that uh, this one's the hot-blooded it's so pretty and the hummingbirds go bonkers for these they really really like these plants um, and the hum and all the butterflies also as well really like these plants um, what I always talk about with things that attract the butterflies is they like anything that's kind of like a miniature helicopter landing pad and that's exactly what these are <laughs> down to the bullseye in the middle which is kind of amazing um, but they like something they can land on to drink the nectar out of. So it's not the caterpillars that are attracted to these. It's the um, adult butterflies that are attracted to these. But the hummingbirds love them as well. So uh, really, really great. Comes in, in a range of colors, um, which is really nice. And they're very, very low maintenance because of the size. Uh, you don't have to shear them back super hard. Uh, they do appreciate a once a year kind of shearing back. So usually you'll do that like at the end of fall, the beginning of winter, just to kind of cut off 
some of the older uh, blossoms and things that are on here, but you don't have to deadhead these either. Um, when they are done flowering, the flower that they leave behind is really kind of inconspicuous and not bad looking. It's, it's kind of attractive. A lot of things we deadhead because once the flower is spent, it's very unattractive and this doesn't do that. So it's, it's, if you are new into plants and you really want to attract all of the great pollinators and things, this is the perfect plant. So this and the kufia, so, so simple, uh, which is really great. And because the size control now, of course, we still do sell the ones that get big and kind of trail out, uh, ones that are lower and tighter to the ground. Um, but these ones are just really perfect for kind of every application, not too large, great in containers. They want good drainage. Um, once they're established, they're very, very low water. They hardly require any water once you get them established. Um, I was looking like an inch a week of water, which really doesn't mean much uh, in the summertime. Um, they don't really have a lot of pest problems, which is fantastic. So there's really not a lot of things that they um, have issues with. Uh, the Even the, the munching critters uh, tend to not go for these. So things like rabbits, uh, we have a lot of people locally in the area that have a lot of rabbit problems and these are great for that. The rabbits don't go for them. Uh, the leaf is a little bit fuzzy and has, um, kind of a funny smell to it. So typically rabbits aren't attracted to things like that. Um, but lantana is just such an easy, perfect, simple flower. Um, for fertilizing, the only thing that I think that people don't realize with these is fertilizing, they do appreciate a little bit of acidity. So um, we sell the acid mix. Um, this is the down to earth uh, variety of fertilizer. We have a lot of different kinds of fertilizers. Um, what I like about this one, you just throw it on the ground, water it in, that's it. So you don't have to mix it with water and pour it in and deal with all of that. Um, when you have a lot of plants that takes a lot of time uh, so I appreciate the the convenience and ease of this uh, this is all organic Rogers here we are all organic we've been all organic for probably 13 years now I've been saying 10 years for like three years so I'm pretty sure it's been about 13 years now um, so this is really, really easy. Just throw this right into the ground, water it in. If you don't have this and you're like, oh, but I don't have that, still fertilize. Um, it's great to fertilize your plants. You can use the all-purpose fertilizer, absolutely. Um, and you can add just a little bit of coffee grounds. So if you drink coffee, just sprinkle a little bit around the bottom. You don't need to go crazy on the coffee grounds. Maybe like twice a year, they appreciate a little bit that. It's great composting. Uh, so it's, it's a great thing to do. Just throw the little coffee grounds around there. Um, they're not particularly heavy fertilizing uh, or heavy feeding plants anyways uh, so but they do definitely appreciate that extra boost um, with anything um, that has the MPK on there uh, something to add a little bit for the flowers will really keep them full and bushy and really really pretty um, so it's maybe once a month not even that much I fertilize my roses and my more heavy feeders about once a month uh, these don't even really require it that often um, but in a great great container plant I love how these will kind of spill over the edge of a container um, and give you that really pretty bright color uh, so they're really great for like companion planting with other things. I love it so much with kufia. Uh, makes a good filler, kind of spiller, and that's something you're always looking to soften the edges of your containers up. Uh, it's really, really perfect for that. So uh, it's a simple, simple, easy plant. So if you're like, I don't know what to do. I'm not very good at gardening. Get one of these guys. Get oh butterfly <laughs> get it. I was hoping it would come up to us uh, get a lantana so it's it's simple great for the hummingbirds the butterflies uh, the bees too um, it's not a super crazy attractor for bees but it will attract the bees as well so uh, it's a very great fun plant to have in the garden um, of course we are alive so if anybody has any questions you can put that down below and we can answer all those questions for you if you're tuning in later and you're thinking oh I missed it uh, you can always put your questions down below still we will still answer all those questions for you as well. So do we have any questions currently? Yes, thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, hold on. How often are you supposed to water them? Yeah, so they don't require a lot of water. In the beginning, when you first plant a plant, it's always best to keep it watered because it's used to being in this tight little root ball, right? Once you get it into the ground, the surrounding soil is kind of pulling the moisture out of that root ball. So you do want to continue to water. That root ball is also very, very tight when you first put it in the ground, right? Your surrounding soil is probably not as tight. So when you water, what tends to happen is the water displaces around the root ball and goes into the surrounding soil. Um, once the plant starts to get established, and the way you can tell that it's getting established is you 
you start seeing new growth on it, then you know that that root ball has broken out of its little confines of being in that little cylinder and is starting to go into the surrounding soil. So keeping it moist in the beginning is really important, especially in the summer months. So I would say water it maybe three times a week. Low and slow is the game. So you're making sure you're actually penetrating that root ball and getting water into the root ball, not just the surrounding soil. Um, so with the kind of summer that we're having, we're pretty hot today. Uh, three times a week is perfect. Um, but once it gets established, it doesn't require a whole lot. So it's great. Hold on. We lost um, live on Instagram. Oh, no. Was, Bye, Instagram. No, no. Hi, Facebook. <laughs> we'll get that restarted. Um, but yeah, so it doesn't require a lot of water. Um, in the winter months and stuff too, honestly, if you have it in an area that you're hand watering, you can definitely slow down on the watering on that. Um, maybe once a week is totally fine. Uh, you don't want to totally drought it completely. Um, but because of the water requirements, what's really nice is this pairs really well with succulents and stuff too. So um, I just recently saw someone has really beautiful pot with a really great, beautiful agave in it. And they had this planted all the way around it. And with the gray of the agave and then the bright green and colorful on the bottom it was just such a beautiful beautiful planting and really works well once you get that lantana established it's great the succulents can actually take a lot more water uh, than what we tend to give them uh, they don't need it but um, those pair really well together very good companion planting can you overwater these? You could, um, definitely. Um, the, the couple of problems that they deal with is, um, if we're particularly humid and you're watering every single day for just a couple of minutes, you're probably going to wind up getting uh, some pow powdery mildew on here. And what that looks like is kind of a grayish whitish mark on the leaves. Um, these ones are so healthy. They don't have anything going on on them. Sometimes you can see a little bit of that here because we water the plants pretty often. These black and green containers tend to dry out very quickly. Uh, so we have to water kind of a lot when they're in these containers. Once you get it into your pot or into in the ground, um, it doesn't require that kind of watering. Um, so, but I don't even see an example to show you of what that kind of looks like, but, um, never water your plants every single day. <laughs> Once you have it in a pot or in the ground, it doesn't require everyday watering. Um, you don't want to keep the top of the soil constantly wet. Um, what happens is you're creating a humidity microclimate and it's constantly evaporating from the ground and that whole surrounding area is staying super duper duper humid. We have had such a humid summer that everybody in general is dealing with a lot of mildew problems. Um, so don't water every single day. Uh, you can do some rotting out with that. You're definitely going to create some like black spot or some um, powdery mildew issues if you do that. Uh, so the game always is low and slow and infrequently. So you want to keep the soil down low, cool and moist, but the soil up top dry. So the way you do that, water slow and long and then wait a couple of days and then do it again. In the summertime, I would say uh, watering every three days is totally fine. Uh, it's been pretty hot so that that would totally work. Um, if you water every single day, you're definitely going to rot out your plant or create a lot of mildew problems. So you can over water. Uh, so just kind of reel that back in. But they're very, very hardy plants. So uh, they don't really have a lot of issues and they could probably handle some overwatering, but don't do it. You don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? No, that seems to be all the awesome. questions for today. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you so much, you guys, for tuning in. Uh, it's always fun to talk to you. Uh, we really, really enjoy me and Suzanne doing these live streams. Suzanne always does the one on Tuesday. I usually do the one on Thursday. Uh, typically, we start around 9.30ish, uh, and it's just really, really fun. Suzanne always does really fun, cool things. She always talks about what currently to do in your garden or about planting containers or showing you uh, really great ideas for fertilizing and watering and all that kind of awesome stuff. Um, lately on Thursdays, I've been introducing uh, to the new plant of the week. So the plant of the week always means that we have a good amount of these. You can buy them online or you can come into the store and get them. Um, and everything we've been doing uh, with the plant of the week has been aimed towards hummingbirds, but that also means butterflies, uh, which is really fun. Um, so yeah, it's really great. Um, make sure that you sign up and for our email list. With the emailers, you get to know about 
all the amazing things going on. We have more seminars coming up, in-person things. Uh, we have a really great one um, where you can actually come into the workshop and uh, we have somebody there who's uh, really active with the Autobahn Society and stuff and he um, will show you how to take pictures of hummingbirds, which is really hard because they're very fast. <laughs> uh, 60 miles an hour those birds can go. I've been trying my darnest and I barely can get any photos, even though there's hundreds of them here. Um, but he's going to be talking about that, showing you, of course, all his great stuff, uh, the, all the photos he has, which is just amazing. Uh, it's a $10 class. You can find all that information online. Uh, $5 goes to the Sea and Sage Audubon Society. Uh, so it's a great donation for that. Um, everything that you purchase here, you can round up your purchase uh, and your roundup contribute, um, contributes to the Sea and Sage Audubon. And we're matching that here at Rogers Garden. So that's a really great thing. They do amazing conservation stuff uh, for all the wild, local wildlife here, uh, hummingbirds and everything as well. So it's a really great thing we've got going on. Um, and we have all kinds of hummingbird kits that you can buy. We have tons of beautiful feeders and all kinds of amazing stuff. Uh, also, too, check out our YouTube page. There's so much great content there. It goes back years and years and years. So anything you possibly could have a question on, staghorns, hydrangeas, whatever, dahlias, there is a video for it probably multiple videos for it so it's really really kind of amazing you can see a lot of great information there um, as well and then tag any of your friends down below you know somebody who's really interested in hummingbirds someone really interested in butterflies uh, make sure you tag down below there to let them know about this if you came into this a little bit late add your questions later we will answer those questions for you uh, and I really really appreciate you guys tuning in it's been so much fun I love it when you come in and talk to us uh, Suzanne really uh, and I are always telling each other how we've met somebody who who's been watching these videos and how that's really gotten them inspired to gardening. So it's really fun to be able to do that for you. So uh, be well, be safe and happy gardening, everybody. See ya.